Hey guys, so the last time we talked about the normal distribution, a lot of the basic concepts about the normal distribution, as well as some of the probabilities associated with certain intervals, right? But now let's go ahead and move on to z-scores. So z-scores, they basically give you a way to standardize any normal distribution. So normal distributions, again, we saw them earlier. They're basically weight, height, anything like that, that happens in the world world. So what we can do with z-scores is that they help us standardize normal distributions in order to find probabilities. So you standardize by changing all these values, so any value that you're interested in, including the mean, including any app value that I, for example, ask you for, you convert those to z-scores. So the z-score represents basically how many standard deviations away, remember that's little sigma x, right? A value is, so any value, any given value, any height, any weight, any age, any GPA, any whatever the case may be, is away from the mean. And the mean, again, remember, is represented by the mu with the little x. Now, the sign of the z-score tells you where this value lies. So, for example, here's the mean, and I tell you a certain value. The, z, the sign of the z-score can tell you on what side of the mean that actually lies. And the way it tells you that is, if the value is above the mean, the z-score is going to be positive. If below the mean, it's going to be negative. Good. So, even though these seems like simple concepts right now, again, I mentioned it last time that I really implore that you guys draw the normal distribution every single time. And so when I want you guys to do it, in the concept um, pages, we're going to have this normal distribution here already for us to just get a visual of this normal distribution. And just to remind us that it's a lot easier when you have a visual to do these problems than without a visual. It gets maybe confusing and things like that. And I know you may get cocky. I even get cocky sometimes. but. I make mistakes as well. So again, I just suggest that you draw the normal distribution every time just to help you get a visual on each problem. So example one, everyone comes in pre-med, so everyone goes to college thinking they're pre-med, they want to be doctors, they're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, um, but they get to organic chemistry or any other more difficult class and they say, screw this. So the grades in the class are normally distributed with a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 10. Determine the z-score corresponding to scores of 60, 10, and 30. So. First things first, let's go ahead and write in our mean. So our mean, just like we did before, right, we put it right there in the middle, is 30, right? And then we have a standard deviation of 10. And now determine the z-scores corresponding to 60, 10, and 30. So let's start with 60. So 60 is over here, right? Somewhere over here. Right, and so these are all x values. What do these x values represent? These x values are technically grades, right? Now, we're going to go ahead and write another axis underneath that that says z. And the reason that I do this is that for us to get a visual about how the x values correspond to z values or z scores. So here we have our grades. We're looking at just 60. Now, if z is just the number of standard deviations away any value is from its corresponding mean, then how many standard deviations away is 60? So we can do this like we did earlier last time. So there's 40, there's 50, and then there's 60. So here's one standard deviation, right? So here is 10. Here's another 10. And then here's another 10, right? So this whole distance is three standard deviations away. And we kind of did this analysis last time, so it shouldn't be any different from what we saw before. But now, what's a z-score then? If we are three standard deviations above the mean, that means that our z-score is first things first. Is it positive or negative? It's going to be positive, right? So our z-score ends up being positive what? It's going to be positive 3. And again, the number has to do with what's the actual number of standard deviations away it is from the mean. And then the plus or minus just has to do with what side it's on. If it's on the right of the mean, we're positive. If it's below the mean and on the left side, we're negative. Right? So let's go ahead and try another one. Why don't we try 10? So 10, we're going to do the same process. We have 20 here, right? And so that's 10 away. And then we have 10. And 
which is another 10 away from 20. So how many full standard deviations away is that from the mean? It's two, right? Because 20 is two of those sigma x's, or two of our standard deviations away. So we're two standard deviations away, but this time our sign is what? Positive or negative? Negative, good. Because we're below the mean, or to the left of the mean, right? Awesome. So what about our last one? So we got 60. So for x is 60, z is positive 3. For x is 10, we got that z was negative 2. So now what about when x is 30? What should our z score be for x is 30? So now with 30, 30 is actually the mean, right? So how far away is 30 from 30? There is no distance, right? It's the same exact number. And another way that you can look at this is that if negative is on one side, positive is on the other, then what should be right in the middle? If this is one continuous set of numbers, we're going from negative to positive, at some point it has to be zero. And that's what the value is in the middle. Because the mean is zero standard deviations away from itself, right? Does that make sense? Because it is the mean. So there actually is no distance between the mean and itself. It's just zero. It's right there in the middle. So our z ends up being zero. Let's just recap real quick. With the positive and negative, those represent to the right of the mean and to the left of the mean. And then zero is that the number that we're talking about is actually the mean itself. Cool? So now, we've kind of seen this conceptually. Um, visually, we also saw it too, but now I want to show you the formula. And the formula is basically for any, some, anything more complicated than, oh, one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below. We've already seen things like that, but what about now, maybe it's 1.2 standard deviations above. That gets a little more complicated, and it's not as easy to see visually and for us to think about, oh, it's you know, this far away, so it's one standard deviation. It kind of gets a little more difficult, and we'll have to use a little math to help us out. So, this formula, however, is very similar to what we've seen before. Now, why is that? Because here we have our z-score, so z equals our observation, right? So we have our variable breakdown right next to it. We have our observation minus the mean. So how far is the observation from the mean, right? What's the literal distance from the mean to the observation? Divided by the standard deviation. So what that's basically telling us is how far is this, the observation from the mean, and then how many standard deviations away is that? Does that make sense? So for example, these, further, these ones up here, for example, 60, right? So we have 60 minus 30, that's 30 away, but how many standard deviations is inside of that? It's three. So that's why we get 30 divided by 10, which was our standard deviation. Does that make sense? So there's three tens, in 30, aka there's three standard deviations inside 30, so our z-score was positive 3, right? So I just want you guys to get to um, not just here's the formula and go. I want you guys to kind of understand the concept behind this too and how it all works. Because again, like I said earlier, this is very important for the rest of the class for you guys to understand z-scores and the normal distribution and how this all works. So you and your friend are in different sections of the intro to stats class. She earned a 70 in, cl in the class that had an average of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. You, on the other hand, earned a 65 in a class that had an average of 60 with a standard deviation of 2. Who technically did better? And so what this question is basically asking is who, relative to their class, performed better? Or who, who, relative to the class, got a higher score or was further away from the mean, right? And so even though we can say, literally, the, your friend who earned a 70, she's 20 points away from the average, but we have to take into account the standard deviation as well so that we can see relative to you, how good is she? So let's go ahead and start off with our means. So we have our two means, right? And her class, so let's say her versus you, right? So in her class, her mean was 50, right? And her standard deviation was 10. In your class, the mean was 60. And your standard deviation was 2. So her class is more spread out 
than your class, right? And so we kind of saw measures of spread and how those compare in the last um, practice set that we did right before this one, where we drew the two distributions alongside each other, right? And so one had a higher standard deviation, so it was more spread out. And that's what we see happening in the first one. Even though it's not drawn visually, conceptually we know that her class is more spread out and our class is more um, compressed towards the, the mean. So here we have the mean and the standard deviation for both the classes. Now let's see, she earned a 70, right? And you earned what? You earned a 65. So just by looking at this, it doesn't seem like you did any better, right? Because you got a 65, she got a 70, so she technically beat you. But now, it may be two different professors, they teach very differently and things like that, so the grading may be a little different. And technically, you may end up, at, you may end up getting the higher grade in terms of what comparing yourself to the rest of the class because your class your data is not as spread out. So let's see what it turns out being with the z-scores. So here's all our x's. Which, what do these x's represent? And I like to write what they represent on the side so that I know that from the get-go. So these x's represent exam scores. Right? And now let's go ahead and get z's. So what would the z-score be for 50 in her class? Since 50 is the mean, her z-score for that class, for the 50 is 0, right? Because it's right there in the middle. Same thing happens in your class. The 60 gets a score of 0. But now what about 70 and 65? So x is 70. Let's go ahead and plug that into our z-score formula. So we have x minus the mean of the x divided by the standard deviation of x. So we have an observation of 70. What was the mean? 50, right? And the standard deviation was 10. So we get 20 over 10, or 2. And remember, this is technically positive 2, which positive represents to the right of the mean. And now, let's go ahead and do your class. So this is her. And then you, you got a 65. So once we plug that into our formula, we get 65 minus what? Now this is your mean now, right? So let's go ahead and look at this. We have her mean was 50, so you plug that into there. But then your mean is 60. So that's what you plug in to your formula here. Does that make sense? Because your mean is a little different than what hers was. So 65 minus 60 all over, and our standard deviation is 2. So we get 65 minus 60, which gives us 5 over 2, equals 2.5. And again, we see that we got a positive, right? Because we were to the right of the mean, aka both of you did better than the average in your classes. However, which one of you do you think did better? So even though she scored a 70 and you scored a 65, relative to your respective classes, you actually did better. And the reason for that is because you're more standard deviations away from the average. So the further you are from the average, the more extreme that is. Does that make sense? And so the probability of you finding someone with a 2.5 or higher, right? So someone who scored just as well as you did or higher in your class is not as likely as finding someone who scored just as high as your friend did or higher. Does that make sense? So because your z-score is 2.5, you're two and a half standard deviations above the mean of your class. So you basically scored a much more extreme score relative to your class than what your friend did. So that means you did a lot better. Does that make sense? Now if we were on the other end, it's the opposite. We wouldn't want to be so extreme because if we got negative 2.5, for example, that means we're super low, right? So we're extremely low compared to the rest of our class. We did really poorly. And then if your friend ended up with a negative 2, that means she did better because she's not as low or as far below the mean as I am. But again, that's if you both got negatives. Here you both did a good job, but you technically did better even though you just got a 65. 
So that's about it for Z-scores, kind of talking about how to calculate it and how to interpret them in case we do find one. So let's go ahead and move on to our practice set.